Hey everyone, I'm Nico from Licks of the Beast and I'm very excited to make this video because today I get to tell you about this beautiful beast of a guitar. So this is a vintage Ibanez Destroyer 2 DT300FR. The FR stands for Fire Red, which was actually the only available color for this model. The DT300 was produced in Japan from 1980 to 1982 and it was a limited production run, so it makes these rather rare. This particular one here was built in November of 1980. This is the exact same model that Adrian Smith played from the tail end of the Killers Tour all the way until the end of the Peace of Mind Tour. According to Adrian, during their first tour of Japan, somebody from Ibanez showed up at the venue in Tokyo to present some new products. After Adrian played the Destroyer for a bit and expressed how much he liked it, the guy from Ibanez basically said, we want you to keep it, it's yours. This is a guitar I've always dreamed of owning ever since I first saw the music video to The Number of the Beast. I've always loved the way the guitar looked, and I've always been a huge fan of Adrian's tone on Number of the Beast and on Peace of Mind. However, because it's such a rare model, I couldn't really get my hands on one, and the few times I saw one available, it would sell right away, so I just never had any luck with it. However, little did I know that my very sneaky but very awesome wife Sarah had been doing her own search on the back end. So here's how this guitar came to be in my possession. So last Thursday, Sarah tells me, hey, Toronto's about to go into a 28-day lockdown starting Monday, so it would probably be a good idea to drive to Montreal over the weekend just to pay your mom a little backyard visit in case we can't be there for the holidays. So of course, I think this is a great idea, but I'm a little bit hesitant because it's quite a long drive just to go and come back right away. It's about 600 kilometers to go and then 600 kilometers to get back, which is about 370 miles from my non-metric friends. Saturday morning, we head out, and at our first pit stop, she tells me, okay, so here's the thing. We need to make a stop in Montreal before we do anything else. I'm like, okay, what stop? And she says, your Christmas present is in Montreal and I need to pick it up. And since it's not something I could really hide from you, we might as well go and pick it up together. So now, of course, I'm trying to think, what could be in Montreal that you couldn't get in Toronto? Are we getting a dog or something? And she says, well, I got you the Ibanez Destroyer 2 DT300 FR, made in Japan, 1980, serial number checks out. It turns out that she managed to locate somebody who was selling his after 40 years of owning it. He had since moved on to playing mainly acoustic music and was focusing more on his Bruce Springsteen tribute, so this destroyer was kind of just sitting there, and he thought it was a shame because this is a guitar that really deserves to be played. So she contacted him, and she explained to him why he really needed to sell it to her. So she sent him links to my Instagram page and my YouTube channel. And after watching some of the videos, he basically said, yeah, this is amazing, let's do this. So we went to his house to get it. And as soon as I picked it up, I felt an immediate connection with this guitar. It was kind of like when Arnie sits inside Christine for the first time. Her name's Christine. I like that. In fact, I should probably call this guitar Christine. It's fire red, it's got a deep connection with its owner, classic looks, it kind of fits. So Tony, the original owner, got this guitar for Christmas from his parents in 1980. And in fact, he still had the picture of that Christmas morning with his parents and the guitar. And just seeing that made it so much more special to me. Tony, if you're watching this, thank you so much for being such a gracious gentleman. I know this guitar was a really important part of your musical journey, and I can assure you it's going to be played with a lot of love and a lot of respect. I really enjoyed our chat and hopefully we could do it again sometime under better circumstances when we're not so pressed for time. So I've been playing this guitar for the whole week, nonstop. Honestly, I'm having the hardest time putting this thing down. Sarah, thank you so very much. This has to be the absolute best early Christmas present I've ever received. Now, let's take a closer look at it. <laughs> Oh, 
The first thing you notice when looking at the destroyer is, of course, its striking shape, fire red color, and gold accents. From a purely aesthetic point of view, this guitar is absolutely stunning. The body is made of alder, which is a wood known for producing a strong and full-bodied sound with thick mids and excellent low end. This model has a set neck. Now, personally, I really like set necks because you get a really good resonance as well as a warm and meaty tone. The neck is three-piece maple, and the fretboard is rosewood. The neck profile is thin, but it's not too thin, kind of like a modern C-neck. Now, I find it really easy to play. It's very comfortable. Um, wherever you are on the neck, you just feel right at home on this guitar. The scale length is a 24 and 3 quarter inch, which is the same as a Gibson. And that's not surprising since the Destroyer is basically based on the Gibson Explorer. The bridge is what Ibanez calls a Gibraltar bridge. Now it's basically a two nomadic style with the matching tailpiece. I really like this kind of bridge because it's very stable and it makes changing the strings and adjusting the action and intonation really easy. Now let's take a quick look at the pickups. The bridge pickup is an Ibanez V2 humbucker. The tone from this one is tight with a smooth top end and really good sustain. It's a bit like a DiMarzio Super Distortion, but instead of ceramic magnets, these are all Nico 5s, so the tone it produces is a little tastier and a bit more versatile. In the neck, you have an Ibanez Super 58, which is a really warm and smooth sounding pickup. For controls, we have a three-way toggle switch, a separate volume knob for each pickup, and one master tone. The controls are very responsive and they allow you to dial in a wide variety of tones. So even though this looks like a heavy metal guitar, it's actually really versatile. The knobs are Ibanez's patented sure grip knobs, and aside from looking really cool and vintage, they're also very smooth and comfortable to operate, and they're great for volume swells. Now I realize that this might come off as me just fanboying all over this thing, and who knows, maybe in a way I am, but honestly, I just haven't found anything I dislike about it. I just absolutely love this guitar. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and for allowing me to share this little adventure with you. I look forward to seeing you all soon with more licks from this beast.